Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Leaf Classes. I am Anjali. Children, as you know, we have already solved section A of the specimen question paper for ICSC Computer Application, and today we will be solving section B, that is of 20 marks. And I hope all of you have already solved it, and please check your answers with mine. In case of any doubt, please do comment in the comment section. Children, in this section, there are total. Four questions, first two questions are of six marks each and remaining two questions are of four marks each. So, 20 marks question paper it is. And children, uh, please take out your question paper if you have taken out the printout so that you can check it properly because the length of the question is little long. It is little lengthy and if your screen doesn't allow you to see it properly, please take out your question paper with you. Now, in this, children, for solving section B, I would recommend you to practice the programs. The more you will practice the programs, better you will be in solving MCQs. So, we begin with the first question, that is question number 7 of question paper. Given below is a class with the following specifications. The class name is given overload. And it has two member methods. The name of the member methods is print. Children, what does this indicate? That this is the program of function overloading. All of you know, when in one program we are using more than one function with the same name, that is function overloading. And they should be differentiated either by the number of parameters or the type of parameter. Here the first print Function is not returning any value, void is written and here it is int n. Children, for this you have the complete program written and few places the blanks are there and these blanks are marked with a, b, c, d like this and you have to choose the correct option for these blanks. So, we start class A. A, the class name is already given in the question, it is overload. So, we come to this for option A, the second is the correct answer. Children, please note that Java is case sensitive language and capital and small. That is lower case and upper case are treated differently. So, here it has to be the same name which is given in the question and that is option Q. Now, we come to the function void print int n. This is the function prototype already given. And this function is to print the first n natural numbers. And when we see the function definition, the body of this function int k, k is declared as int type. And in for loop 3 uh, values we have to put. Now the first natural number is 1, right? So here it has to be k equals to 1. Till where you have to do it? Till k is less than equals to n till n and we have to print all the natural numbers so it is k plus plus 1 then 2 then 3 till n. So let us see b equals to the value of b should be k equals to 1 that means option 1 is the correct answer. Then in c k less than equals to n. Here we have option 1 again as the correct answer. D it is k plus plus. So it is option 3 is the correct answer. Children if you know the program it becomes very easy to pick the correct option. Please do the program. Read the question carefully. Don't just put a tick mark on any option. Now we move on to the second function. Boolean print int m and int n. It is taking two parameters to check whether n is a multiple of m or not. Now here the function prototype here boolean print int m comma int n. Children it is already given in the question. So it is int n. So that means we have option 1 as the correct answer. Then if here you have to put the condition right. Now you have to put the condition if n is multiple of m or not. That means m should be the factor of n. So for checking factors we check n modulus m is equals to 0 or not. If this condition is true that means n is the multiple of m or m is the factor of n. Right? 
so children here n modulus m equals to 0 that is option 1 is correct so children uh, like this if you know the program first question is a function overloading so my recommendation again to practice the programs of function overloading now we move on to question number 8 that is the second question in section b all these are descriptive type questions so you have to be little more attentive while reading the questions also the following program is based on the specification given below. Fill in the blanks with the appropriate Java statements. Class name is telephone. So we are solving it side by side. So you have option A that is A class name is telephone. So this is telephone already given in the question. We cannot change it. So here we come to this option. Option 1 is correct. Then you have member variables, member method and the function calculate for calculating. Okay. Then you have main method is also there. Now if the value is to be entered and that true scanner class, then we have to create the object scanner ob equals to new. New operator is used to create the object of the given class. Right children? So here option 2 is the correct answer. Enter number of calls. Here you have to enter number of calls and already they have taken the variable NOC as per the program. So NOC is INT type. So what you have to take here SC dot next INT. This is the function which is used to input integer type value. So, sc dot next int is the function name. Right children? Now we have the remaining three parts for this. Now we move on to the calculate function. What calculate function is supposed to do? It will calculate the telephone bill as per the following criteria. Number of calls if it is up to 100 calls are free. Above 100 calls rupees 2.50 right children per call that is per call now we go to void calculate function which is supposed to calculate the bill amount as per the number of calls now here for option d you have to put the condition and if that condition is found to be true bill should be equal to zero and when the bill amount is zero for the first hundred calls and number of calls we have stored in noc variable so, if NOC is less than equals to 100, then bill equals to 0. So, we come here less than equals to 100. That means option 2 is the correct answer. Right. Else. Now, else if it is this condition is false, that means number of calls are above 100. So, what is the rate? That is 2.50 per call. And that is for the calls which are more than 100. So, for first 100 calls, amount is 0 and how many calls are left for the calculation? That will be number of calls minus 100 multiplied by 2.50. Right children? This is for first 100 and for remaining 100, already 100 is calculated here. So, for number of calls more than 100, you will calculate as NOC minus 100. And the rate for each call is 2.50. Children, always it is better to write the options as per the specification, as per the question given. And then check whether that option is present in the list or not. Okay. So, here uh, you have option 1. 0 plus n minus 100 into 2.50. Option 1 is the correct answer. Now, void print. There is no fill in the blanks in this. Here only name and amount to be paid is printed. Then we come to main function. Here what is this first statement? Here the object is created for the class telephone. Class name is telephone and it is created for this. Now t dot input. How you call the functions? Using object name dot function name. Then you have to call the calculate function for call the calculate function. Again we will use the object name dot function name and uh, like this it will be done so check whether it is there or not yes it is there and option 2 is a correct answer i hope children all of you have done it correctly very simple very interesting question 
okay now we come to question number 9 the following program segment calculates the norm of a number norm of a number is a square root of sum of squares of all digits of the number children i would recommend you to practice number programs as much as you can because one question will be definitely from number program now when we come to this the norm of a number is the sum of the squares of the digits right so 6 8 if it is there that is 6 into 6 plus 8 into 8 this will be 36 plus 64 when we calculate the square root of 100 that will be 10 so the norm of 68 is 10 fill in the blanks again here void norm intn and since we have to store the sum result and in almost all the number programs i have told you whenever we have to uh, store the sum we have to initialize the value of sum by 0 and it is int type so it has to be 0 not 0.0 so option 1 is the correct answer for a while children here it is written in capital it should be small we will consider this as small case while only right now while here you have to put the condition till when you have to do this till or uh, till you have not extracted all the digits that means till the value of n is greater than 0 so when for extraction children here i would recommend you to Uh, go through the number programs videos the playlist is there please check that i will uh, give the playlist link in the description box also right so till this condition is true you have to repeat this process this is used for extraction of the digit so option b we have n greater than 0 that means first is the correct answer this statement is used for extraction d equals to n modulus 10 always uh, the extraction of the digit will take place from right to left one by one s equals to what now children we have to uh, find the square of the digit and store the value of sum in s variable s equals to d multiplied by d d is the digit find the square add that to s variable right so s plus d into d again option 1 is the correct answer then after the completion of while loop norm plus t what is there for norm by this while loop you have got the sum of the squares of the digit but you have to find the norm norm how it will be calculated by using sqrt function so math dot sqrt of what s right so math dot sqrt of s again option 1 is the correct answer for this children please note here math dot sqrt is uh, case sensitive java is case sensitive so sqrt will not be used and you don't have to find the square root of the number which you have entered you have to find the square root of the sum uh, which you have calculated using this while loop i hope this is also clear to all of you yes now we come to question number 10 read the paragraph given below like children it seems like you are attempting the english paper where the case study is there and depending upon that only you have to answer so i'll just read it fast and then we will discuss the answers to check for a condition and execute the statements based on the condition can be done using the decision control statement in class 9th already you have done decision control that two decision control statements in java are if and switch what are the two decision control statements in java if and switch so option 1 is the correct answer switch is also multiple branching if statement within another if is termed as nested if which the question number b says an if statement within another if is termed as nested if right children so nested if option 3 is the correct answer now we move to next question name given for repetitive execution of set of statements 
here children this is very very easy question repetitive execution of a set of statements is termed as looping so here option 1 is the correct answer this one is little tricky which one of the following does not execute even once and in the question says the statements are executed as long as the condition is true right so we have to check the condition in for loop what is there first is initialization the second is test condition and third is update expression right and here all three are given so one k less than equals to 100 yes condition is true so it will be executed the second is 10 and less than 1 10 is less than 1 no so this will not be executed because first time only the condition is coming false right Now, the last one also k equals to 1 k greater than equals to 1 yes one is equals to 1 so this will be also executed so only option 2 is there in which the condition is false in the first time only so this will not be executed even once so children this was the last question in your specimen question paper and we will be continuing our mcq 10 on 10 series from next video i hope all of you are enjoying do comment if you have any doubt and you want on any particular topic apart from the topics which we are doing and children first we will be focusing on our semester 1 exam right only four topics are there that is revision of class 9 syllabus class as the basis of all computation user defined methods and constructor so all the best to all of you for the preparation and if you haven't subscribed the channel till now please do subscribe and press the bell icon so that you get the notifications for all the videos and no important topic is missed by you keep practicing keep working hard god bless you children